Hello everyone and welcome back to another art supply unboxing and demo. I'm really excited to share this with you guys because first of all who doesn't love new art supplies and these ones are really special. This time around I wanted to focus on supporting small businesses so here we go. The first package is from an Etsy shop called Poems About You by a seller named Lena that's based out of Washington DC. This shop has handmade watercolor paints and little original watercolor paintings. In addition to the Etsy shop, there's also a website, um, poemsaboutyou.com, and on Instagram at poemsaboutyoushop. I really love this seller. I was instantly drawn to the shop and all the beautiful colors and carefully handmade paints. I bought one of the original watercolor paintings. Uh, it was a 6x4 hand painted postcard that's so gorgeous. It came with an envelope that I'm literally just now realizing is because it's a postcard. So you can mail it, obviously. Uh, but um, I don't know why I didn't think of that before and I didn't really want to mail it anyway, so I put it up on my wall. <laughs> um, I find original artwork to be really special, I guess, especially because I'm an artist myself, just knowing the care that goes into it. And all the colors of this postcard are so pretty. Okay, so I also got some handmade watercolor paints, of course. Um, in this shop, you can buy sets or individual pans, but I chose to get a set. It's a six color set uh, called Subtle Earth Colors. And I got it with the tin and the magnets to stick it into the tin, stick the pans into the tin. Um, it came with a Poems About You sticker, a piece of watercolor paper with Poems About You, like, uh, what's the word? embossed okay I just googled it the word is embossed <laughs> and also a little piece of watercolor paper that fits inside the tin for swatching the colors the six paints included in the set are indigo extra light ochre oh god I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation kaput mortuum violet titanium gray tassel earth and titan buff now there is a lot of information about these paints on the actual Etsy listing, uh, like an impressive amount. So if you're interested in buying any paints from Poems About You, you can expect a highly detailed description for any colors you're interested in. But um, some of the highlights of this specific set are that it includes two dark colors, which are Castle Earth and Indigo, two opaque colors, Titanium Gray and Titan Buff, and two highly granulated colors, Caput Mortuum Violet and Extra Light Ochre. The set combines these specific colors to offer a nice balance of warm and cool and opacity and texture. The paints are handmade using natural and organic materials with no additives or fillers, which I find super cool. Um, and the seller describes that the paints are textured watercolor paints with a lot of character, which after I use them, I can say is definitely true. The pans are the size of standard half pans and the little tin is really convenient if you're someone who likes to paint on the go. Uh, later in the video I will be swatching them out and then uh, showcasing them in a watercolor piece. The next package is another very special item from a seller on Etsy. This seller is All Things Cotton Paper, ran by Ellie out of Charleston, South Carolina. The Instagram is at All Things Cotton Paper, and the website is allthingscottonpaper.com. Um, All Things Cotton Paper has a lot to offer, including very personalized gifts. For example, a music sheet of your wedding song, printed on handmade paper, as well as a variety of handmade papers and envelopes, like for wedding invitations or something. What I bought was the handmade cotton rag paper pack of five, 12 inch by 18 inch handmade 300 GSM paper. Again, this product is a very has a very detailed description on the listing, um, and I learned a new word from it, which is that the paper has a decal edge, which is this rough untrimmed edge, and the finish is described as medium smooth hot pressed. It's acid free, 100% rag. Uh, which means it's completely made from cotton cloth and 100% recycled, also called tree-free, which is awesome. And it's handmade in India, but it ships from the U.S. within one day of your order. 
Okay, the next package is from Choosing Keeping, a stationery store in London that sells gorgeous and unique stationery and art supplies. I love this store. I've done a video before unboxing some materials from Choosing Keeping, and I always really enjoy ordering and trying out new things from them. Choosing Keeping sources their materials mostly from small family owned businesses and has a gorgeous collection of fountain pens, pencils, inks, paper goods, art supplies, office supplies, greeting cards, Christmas ornaments, and more. The first thing I'm opening up is two inks that I wanted to try because I've used this brand Noodlers before, uh, Noodlers American Fountain Pen Ink. Okay, listen, I might just now be realizing that I, a person in America, bought an American product from a shop in London, which is pretty silly. Um, and these inks are available on Amazon, which uh, is where I bought the one that I used before. Uh, it was a black waterproof fountain pen ink that I could go on and on about because it was amazing. I'm, and uh, I'm not really a mathematician, but I think I probably would have been cheaper for me to get this from somewhere in America. But it's too late. I've already done it. And, uh, you know, life's too short to have regrets. So let's move on. These are 85 milliliter bottles of fountain pen ink, and the website has eight different colors of this particular brand. Uh, obviously, they have other brands of bottled ink. Um, each of the inks has a detailed description of the colors and information about UV resistance or whether or not they're waterproof. I got the Georgia Peach ink, which is described as a soft, translucent, peachy pink tone that glows under UV light but is not waterproof. I also got golden brown, which is described as varying from yellow to rich golden. It's partially UV resistant and partially waterproof. I'll talk more about these inks uh, later on in the video. Next, I was really excited about this Choosing Keeping Retro Watercolor Set inspired by the 1930s. They're Japanese Gonsai paints, which I've talked about before in videos, which I usually tend to prefer over Western watercolors. Um, directly out of the pan, they kind of can be compared to gouache, but um, you can also use them in translucent washes. This set comes with eight colors. Um, they're vegetarian slash vegan, non-toxic, made in Japan, and it also comes with a blank letterpress swatch card um, that you can paint on for color reference. So I'll talk more about these paints when I swatch them out. So I wanted to get some fountain pens to try out the ink from Choose and Keeping. And I had already spent a lot of money, so I just got an affordable set from Amazon, which I know is the exact opposite of a small business, but I just needed something simple and cheap to try out the ink. This set is the Lanxivi Yongsheng geez, uh, 3009 Piston Fountain Pen, a fine nib with silver trim. So a lot of fountain pens come with an ink cartridge or require a converter if you want to use ink from a bottle, but I always look for ones that don't need cartridges and this set that I got has a piston filling mechanism that allows you to just dip the nib into a bottle of ink and then twist the barrel and it'll fill up with the ink. By the way, all of the materials that are shown in the video are also listed and linked in the video description if you want to check them out or just look at the shops. All right, now I'm going to swatch out the materials that I got, starting with the Choosing Keeping Gonsai watercolors. I was really excited about this set. It comes in this really beautiful little box and it's nice and compact with only eight colors. The watercolor set that I use the most is the Kuretake Kanzai set of 46. So obviously it takes up like half my desk and I truly only use like less than half of the colors most of the time. So I feel like it'll be nice to have a smaller 
kind of curated set of paints and um, there is a really good range of pigments in this set. I like the colors a lot. Um, so on the website, the Choosing Keeping website, they have what they call a color breakdown. The first color is Golden Ochre and this is definitely a color that I use a lot when I'm painting. It's the base of most skin tones that I mix. The next one is Black Tea, which is a nice, dark, rich, blackish brown. Then we have what the website calls Blush, which to me looks like a soft, pretty yellow. Next is Iron Skin, which the website says is inspired by the strong metal used to coat the more flexible interior metal of Japanese swords. The next one is probably my favorite. This one they call Earthy Crimson. Next is what is called Charred Tea, which is a nice warm brown. I think one thing that initially inspired me to get the specific 1930s set instead of one of the other decades is that it has two different shades of brown. Next is Mixed Green. And this one you'll see when it dries, the colors that make up the pigment kind of separate into these gorgeous blues and greens that look really cool. Finally, there's Ancient Purple, and the website says that due to the high cost of this pigment in history, purple was traditionally associated with wealth in Japan, and ordinary people weren't allowed to wear it, which is an interesting little tidbit. So I didn't mention before, but there are other, um, other decades inspired sets. So I got the 1930s, but they also have 1920s, 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s, or they have, um, where you can buy like multiple sets. Um, they have the, the 20th century part one or the 20th century part two. So you can buy like multiple at the same time. Okay, next I'm gonna swatch out the Poems About You Subtle Earth Tones Handmade Watercolors. And the first color is Indigo. This is one of the pigments that uh, is categorized on the listing as dark. Next is Titan Buff, which is one that's categorized as opaque. And I think this one might be my favorite. It's really gorgeous and unique. I don't have any paints that are like this one. Next is Castle Earth. You know I love a great brown. Um, another one that's categorized as dark. Next is Kaput Mortuum Violet, which is highly granulated and coarse with a mineral glimmer. Um, this one was really hard to activate at first, but once I kind of like worked the brush into it, I kind of got more of the color, the pigment out, and it's definitely really textured, which is cool. Next is Extra Light Ochre, another highly granulated paint. And finally, Titanium Gray, which is the second opaque pigment. From what I know, and I'm certainly not an expert or professional, um, I think the opaque ones tend to have white mixed in, which is why they have that kind of creamy color to them. All of these paints are either made from natural earth pigment or natural plant extract, which I find super cool. All right, let's get into these Noodlers inks. So I don't know what possessed me to shake the bottle, but it was full to the brim and I spilled it everywhere. And when I was looking back on the listing on choosing keeping, it says not once, but twice in the description that the bottle is very full and to open it with caution. So read the fine print people. Um, this first color is the Georgia Peach, which, if I'm honest, was a lot more neon than I thought it was going to be based on the picture that's shown on the website. But going back and reading the color description, they describe it as bright. 
So, all right, I'm just gonna embrace it. We love a hot pink. The second color is golden brown, and I did not spill this one. So I filled up two of the fountain pens that I got. They work kind of like a water dropper. Like there's this little tube inside that you twist all the way down and then you stick the nib into the ink and twist the tube back up and it sucks up the ink from the bottle. I wanted to do a watercolor painting to showcase all of the materials that I got and I have this sketch on my iPad that I had done recently kind of with this video in mind. Since I didn't have the heart to cut the handmade paper especially because of the beautiful deckle edges, I just decided I would do the largest watercolor painting I've ever done on the full 12 by 18 paper. So I printed out my sketch from Procreate like I always do and I did it at like 175%. Like if you go near printer settings, it's, it just automatically does 100%, but you can go in and change it and it just changes the size of the, of the image. Um, so I did that so that it would be the right size for the paper. And then I lightly traced it with mechanical pencil using my handy dandy light board. A lot of people actually ask me where I bought my light board or what kind it is and I actually got it from Amazon a few years ago for like $20 or something super cheap and I use it almost every time I do a watercolor painting. I highly highly recommend if you don't have one to get one. It takes the pressure off sketching. You can just do a super rough sketch like on paper or digitally and then just trace it so you don't have to worry about sketching directly on your watercolor paper or erasing a lot which can damage the surface of watercolor paper. So the exact light board that I got isn't on Amazon anymore, but there are others that are virtually the same thing. So if you're interested, you can just search tracing light board or tracing light box on Amazon. And there's a bunch of options, like different sizes, different colors. A lot of them are like under $25 and you just plug it in and turn on the power button. And for mine specifically, which I'm sure others have too, you can hold down the power button and it like adjusts, adjusts the brightness of the light. Lately, I've been doing a lot of portraits that are kind of more stylized and almost cartoony, like that have black line art. Um, for example, the one that was in my last video. But this one is a little bit more realistic. It's probably been about a year since I did a portrait like that. Um, of course, I don't mean it's like super realistic. I've never uh, attempted or been interested in like hyper realism. But, um, you know, just something that doesn't really look like a cartoon. So, you know, I was excited and nervous to do that again. For the skin tone, I used the Gonzai paint from Choosing Keeping. And I believe I mixed the light yellow color that they call Flesh with the orangey pink earthy crimson. I think just a smooch of mixed green as well. I love, love, love this earthy crimson color. It's like the perfect color for blush areas on the face. When I mix skin tones, I generally always use some kind of yellow, some kind of red, and just a tiny bit of blue so that it doesn't come out really orange. For the first element of the background, I use the Titan Buff color from the Poems About You watercolor set, and it's so textured. It almost came out like looking like stone. I love the pigments and the beautiful mix of like grays and almost yellow. It's, it's really cool looking. When it comes to watercolor paintings, even if I have a general sketch of the concept, I never ever have a real plan when it comes to the color palette. Sometimes I wish I was better at mapping out what colors are gonna go where, but I never do. I just kind of start painting and kind of go with my gut and just pick random colors like hmm, I feel like this one will look nice 
And there have been times where this hasn't worked out in my favor and I end up hating it or just regretting certain choices that I make. So in the future, I guess that's kind of a goal is that I can at least start doing basic thumbnails uh, with the color palettes so I can have an idea of like a plan of what's going to go where. For the second element of the background, I use the Kaput Morchum Violet from the Poems About You watercolor set. And it's so textured. It's like almost as if there's sediment in the paint. It looks really beautiful and really cool and unique. My first impressions of this paper, amazing. I really like it. In general, I lean towards cold press over hot press, but even though this paper is um, categorized as hot press, it still has a nice texture to it, which I can appreciate. For the blazer, I just did a flat wash of the golden ochre from the Choosing Keeping Gonzai watercolor set. All right, you can tell that it's the next day because I got my nails done and they're a different color now. But uh, I wanted to show a little close up of the Poems About You paint that's in the background and just how textured it actually is. And uh, for the turtleneck in this painting, I just did a flat wash of the black tea paint from the Choose and Keeping set. Something else that I noticed about this paper was that the absorption rate was kind of slow, meaning that when I would put water and paint down the paper, it wouldn't just like soak it up really fast. And this is a really cool element for watercolor paper to have because it allows you to manipulate the paint before it dries, which means you can blend more easily. Um, it was really cool. It was like the, the paint would, the water and paint would sit on top of the paper and you could kind of push it around. and a super pigmented, dark, splotchy wash uh, using the indigo from the Gonzai set for the rest of the background. I love how dark this color is. It's, it's really beautiful and it, I liked kind of, you know, making it look more textured and unique than just a flat wash by pooling areas of pigment in certain places. For the hair, I wanted to do an ombre effect, so I did the charred tea color blending it into the golden ochre.
Overall, I really liked working on this size painting, especially with this style, something that's a little bit more detailed and like more realistic than my other works. It's, it's nice when the piece itself is larger because I can go in with more detail and have like more room to do that. So I definitely want to make large paintings like this again in the future. With watercolor too, sometimes I get a little bit impatient with letting large portions of paint dry before I keep working. And sometimes this means I'll just jump from one element of the painting to the next. So while I was waiting for the first layer of hair to dry, I filled in this uh, circle thing in the background with mixed green paint from the Gonzai set. Like I mentioned earlier, the pigment kind of separates uh, as it dries into beautiful ranges of teal and blue and green and it looks really nice. I use the same technique that I did with the dark part of the background, kind of like pooling pigment in random areas rather than doing a single flat wash, just to add a, an element of interest in the background and also to showcase the separation of pigments with that specific paint. Then I went in for um, a second layer on the hair and adding more details and more strands and more pigment to kind of just build up the layers there. And from that point just was adding details to the background and other little elements. I think there's a portion of film missing because I do remember at one point I was in the zone painting and then I looked up at my camera and it had not been recording. so. Apologies about that. I used a black fine liner to add in the eyelashes and the, uh, what's it called? Pupil? The pupil <laughs> of the eye because I can never have enough kind of control when it comes to a watercolor brush to add those fine details of eyelashes. So I like to use a fine liner pen. I was kind of at a loss for how I was gonna incorporate the ink with this piece, um, but I ended up using the golden brown ink to add some more lines in the hair especially like towards the end when it's supposed to like go into blonde i wasn't super crazy about how it looked but um and i don't even think from this camera angle you can even really see it so that doesn't matter there was like this really strong urge that i had to instead of using the golden brown to use the pink to add lines into the hair and I was like really curious about how that would look just to kind of add this like interesting element to it but I chickened out because I had already made it this far in the painting and I'm like I don't want to ruin it with pink I really liked how the finished painting came out I really loved making this video I definitely want to make more art supply unboxing videos in the future um, again thank you for watching and I'll see you soon